Python tutorial Gradient Boosting Machine Regression Algorithm learning consists of algorithm training within training data subset for optimal parameters estimation and algorithm testing within testing data subset using previously optimized parameters. This corresponds to a supervised regression machine learning task. This topic is part of machine training analysis with Python Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Gradient boosting machine regression consists of supervised learning meta-algorithm for predicting Apple target feature by boosting of optimally weighted sequentially built decision trees. Boosting is used for simultaneously lowering square bias error and variance error sources of sequentially built decision trees. For full reference, I recommend that you read Friedman, Greedy Function Approximation, a Gradient Boosting Machine, published in the Annals of Statistics in 2001. Classification and regression trees algorithm consists of greedy top-down approach for finding optimal recursive binary node splits by locally minimizing variance at terminal nodes measured through sum of squared errors function at each stage. As a formula, we have the minimization of sum of squared errors equals to the sum from the first to the last of the difference between output target feature data minus terminal node output target feature mean and that result to the power of 2. Terminal node output target feature mean in turn is equal to 1 divided by m, m is the number of observations in terminal node, multiplied by the sum from the first to the last of the output target feature data. Tree boosting algorithm consists of predicting output target feature of weighted sequentially built decision trees. Gradient descent algorithm consists of finding local optimal weight coefficients of sequentially built decision trees by locally minimizing sum of square errors, sum of absolute errors, or Huber loss function. As a formula, here we have an example of the minimization of sum of square errors, which is equal to the sum from the first to the last of the difference between output target feature data minus sequentially built decision trees weighted output target feature prediction sum, and that result to the power of 2. Sequentially built decision trees weighted output target feature prediction sum in turn is equal to the sum from the first to the last, k is the number of sequentially built decision trees, and then we have the learning rate regularization coefficient multiplied by the local optimal sequentially built decision trees weight coefficient multiplied by sequentially built decision trees output target feature prediction. Great, so let's go into Python PyCharm IDE so that we can study gradient boosting machine regression with greater detail. Excellent. So here we are within Python PyCharm IDE. This tutorial will be working within Python tutorial gradient boosting machine regression code file. So the first step within the tutorial is to do packages importing. So we're going to import numpy smp, pandas spd, and from, then from scikit-learn, we're going to import ensemble feature as ML for machine learning algorithm. The next step is to create the data for the gradient boosting machine regression. This is done through data reading. So we create this variable named spy equals to pd or pandas dot read underscore csv. And then we have the path of the data file, which is stored within the data directory. And then we have the data file gradient boosting machine regression data as a plain text file with dot csv or comma separated values index column as date, and we parse those dates as true. So let's open the data file. As we can see, we have a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values. The first column as dates, and the second column as SPY adjusted. SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the standard and Poor's 500 index. Adjusted because this includes adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. Notice data has a daily frequency, and it's from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2015, therefore nine years of data. So back into the code file, once we've read the data, now we're going to create target and predictor features. 
So we first begin with the target feature rspy, which is equal to spy.pct underscore change one position. So this is going to calculate the daily arithmetic rate of return of those SPY adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. And we'll rename the columns of this variable with our SPY columns and the variable name. And then we have the predictor feature. So in this case, we'll have just one predictor feature, which is going to be our SPY1 or previous days returns. So from the previously created RSPY, we shifted one position. We also rename the variable name columns with corresponding RSPY1. And then we're going to bring both target and predictor features together within one name, which we're going to name our SPY all initially equals to our SPY or the target feature, and then we're going to join our SPY one or the predictor feature. Notice that because of the calculation of the predictor feature, which is our SPY one, as we're shifting the data, we will have a none available at the first row. So we're going to remove the first row for both of them. And we do so with dot drop NA. So once we read the data and created target and predictor features, we're going to delimit training and testing ranges. Training range, commonly used for algorithm training, and testing range for algorithm testing to evaluate forecasting accuracy. So the training range is going to be named RSPYT, T for training range, and the testing range RSPYF, F to distinguish it from the training range. Training range is going to be from that previously created RSPY all. We're going to select from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the beginning of 2014, therefore the first seven years of data. And for the testing range, we're going to select from the beginning of 2014 all the way to the beginning of 2016, therefore the last two years of data. Notice that this training and testing range is delimiting was only included as an educational example, therefore it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. Within this tutorial, we'll only be working within the training range. So once we've done this training and testing ranges delimiting, we're going to continue with grading boosting machine regression fitting. So we create this variable named GBMT for grading boosting machine, and then T because we're doing this within the training range. We'll be using ML feature from scikit-learn and the corresponding function grading boosting regressor, capital G, B, and R, and then the parameters. Loss equals to LS or least squares. Learning rate equals to 0.1, that's the regularization coefficient. Number of estimators, two, that's the number of sequentially built decision trees. Maximum depth equals to one, that's the number of terminal nodes that's going to have the correspond, each of those corresponding sequentially built decision trees, meaning that it's going to have two terminal nodes, each of those sequentially built decision trees. And here we're going to fit that corresponding grading boosting machine regression. And we do so by including, first of all, the corresponding predictor feature. Notice that we have only one predictor feature, so we need to do a reshape, and we do so with NumPy array. So from the previously created training range, we select our SPY1, which is the predictor feature, and we reshape it as minus 1, 1. And then we have the target feature. From that same our SPYT or training range, we select the column with our SPY or current day returns. Very important observation regarding the parameters included here within this function is that they were also only included as an educational example, therefore they're not fixed and can be modified according to your needs. And last, we're going to print the grading boosting machine regression fitting score, and we do so right here in which from the previously created GBMT variable, we print its train underscore score. Excellent. So let's go ahead and run this code file. When doing it for the first time at any part of this code, we click the right button on the mouse and scroll down into run the code file name. But as I've done it before, recording this video tutorial, the corresponding names are restored here. So I just select it and click on. Excellent. So right here we see how it opened the running console and it printed the gradient boosting machine regression score. So here we have the mean score error for the first sequentially built decision trees and then we have the mean score error for the second sequentially built decision tree. So what we can see here is that as the number of sequentially built decision trees increase, so here we had just one tree, then we had two trees, the corresponding mean square error decreased in this example. 
Excellent. So now that we've finished studying grading boosting machine regression, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please, pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.